Uh, my name is Martin Hope uh, from Evo6, and I'm joined today by uh, Artie Mohan from Oracle. I just wanted to welcome you to our webinar this morning or this afternoon, uh, depending upon where you are, which uh, time uh, uh, time and zone you're in. Uh, we're just waiting for a number of people to join us, so we'll be coming back to you in the next couple of minutes. So if you just hold for a couple of minutes, that'd be excellent, uh, and we'll see you very, very soon. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Martin Hope um, from Ebusys Global. Uh, I'm the Global VP for uh, Business Acceleration and our SAP program. And I wanted to welcome you to our Business Resilience in the Cloud webinar. I'm joined today by Artie Mohan from Oracle. Uh, welcome, Artie. Thank you, Martin. Uh, and uh, we uh, together we wanted to take you through a sort of a short journey um, on uh, how to build that resilience in the cloud. Uh, we've put an agenda together, which I think you've all seen. So uh, we're going to start with uh, um, the next generation ERP presentation from Artie. Then we'll be moving into what's happening globally with the uh, SAP ECC. How do we see that that affecting you? Uh, why are customers uh, moving away from SAP? Um, I, I think these are important points. Um, and we'll be, I'll be using a specific examples uh, of organizations and what they've been doing. How we see that you can start to regain your competitive advantage. Uh, we've certainly seen challenges uh, through the pandemic and how different organizations cope with that. And then look at the who, look at some uh, customer examples, some case studies for you uh, of how organizations have done both uh, surround with uh, best in class, but then have also done uh, full, uh, very short timescale transformation projects. And then we'll finish on two things. One is how to mitigate your risk of change. And then also the second thing is um, we have an offer, we have an invitation for you that uh, that we hope uh, is relevant for you and um, that we can um, put on the table so that you can, can perhaps consider this further. So without further ado, if I may, if I can hand over to Artie. Um, and if you have any questions, by the way, if you'd like to ask them through the chat, uh, we will try and answer them either through the presentation or at the end in our Q&A session. Good morning or good afternoon, everyone, from wherever you're joining. Uh, my name is Aarti Mohan, and I will take you through uh, the first piece of why we are relevant and introduce to you the next generation ERP. Uh, first, let me uh, introduce myself. So I'm settled in UAE, Dubai. Uh, I'm a digital native. Um, I uh, do take some time out to do yoga and cycling from time to time. I have a passion for life, work, and family, of course, and I've been with Oracle for 13 odd years uh, in the region. Um, before that, I've been uh, doing consulting and implementing these solutions, so uh, have been with Oracle Technologies for a long, long time. And at the moment, I run the ERP and EPM strategy and business development team across a region called Eastern Europe, Middle East, and Africa. So let me start off by saying, you know, what are the analyst views of the challenges uh, finance uh, faces, right? First one is uh, better insight at a faster pace. So only 5% of data um, uh, finance view uh, are basically uh, as the, the business uh, requires, right? Um, too much time is spent collecting, researching, reconciling data. And um, a lot of the CEOs uh, names cost as one of the, uh, uh, sorry, I'm struggling with my screen here, sorry, as one of the top matrix, right? So cost pressure is one of the top matrix for CEOs. And also they want to increase collaboration. They don't want to have those silos uh, of conversations happening in different, different teams where uh, you don't have one version of the truth. Okay, so what, what is Oracle trying to do? There are three things that I will take you through in my presentation today. First one is how do you pivot forward? Second one is how do you define your future? And third one is how do you partner with a, with a partner that is, uh, that is giving you the next generation uh, future? So I'll start off with pivot forward. I think in this uh, crisis situation, we all started uh, working from home at some point. So remote workforce will become a norm. 
um, employee health, safety, and training was was something that was given a lot of emphasis, especially during these times. Um, we want to give our customers a digital experience because uh, physical may or may not be possible in some some places. Uh, we need to be very dynamic with the, with our supply and demand planning, especially with uh, all the broken supply chains that we witnessed in the last year or so. And uh, we need to be very agile with our strategic scenario planning to model scenarios and see um, bit scenario may work for us and how soon it may happen. And it's not something that we do yearly or even quarterly. Some of the organizations um, that we worked with started to do weekly scenario plans um, during the during the pandemic situation. So we want to help our customers to pivot forward. Some examples, uh, Unilever, for instance, um, uh, uses Oracle Cloud supply chain management uh, for logistics, and the system is able to handle 50% spike in the in the volume. Right, so they were able to keep their supply chain moving during the during the pandemic. Okay, some other customers, uh, SMCP, Michelin, Hilton, they achieved different results with their with their transformation. So SMCP is a retail uh, brand. Uh, they have brands like Sandro, Maj, Claudie, uh, Perot, and um, they have opened over 100 stores. Uh, across the globe, and um, they basically uh, used uh, uh, Oracle Cloud to help them with their performance uh, management and reporting. Michelin is a, is a very well-known brand. I don't think I need to say much, but um, they were able to um, they were able to save seven percent in fuel costs and charge uh, a monthly fee for for the service. Um, that they provided of uh, instead of selling the truck tires, they were able to give them on on a, on a service basis to the fleet owners. And Hilton is now able to accurately uh, determine which property uh, will do what kind of what kind of business with accurate forecasts, uh, and their their uh, accuracy improved by forty percent. Some other examples: Hertz, Smith, uh, Orange. Um, so Hertz, for instance, is now able to produce operational and financial plans 75% uh, faster with Oracle Cloud. Uh, Smith, uh, again, uh, is able to, um, able to use uh, multiple strategies from aggressive m and uh, so that they are able to standardize their business on one single finance platform while all this activity is going on to to ensure that they are innovative and they they have a uh, they have a good uh, R and D spend as well, and Orange is a very uh, well known name. It's a telco provider. They uh, basically removed all their customizations down to zero and reduced costs to focus on the right things uh, such as efficiency and uh, transformation of the organization. Right, so there's another uh, video that I'll play shortly, and uh, this is for Lloyds Bank. Lloyds Bank is a wall-to-wall -wall, um, SAP customer, but uh, they went in for uh, Oracle ERP Cloud to transform finance, and here's a quick video uh, explaining uh, their journey. Traditionally, when doing a transformation program, it could be months, if not years, before the user base gets to see the physical office application live. With Oracle in the cloud, we were able to make the application part of the design process, uh, which changed the attitude of all the users in the sense that they weren't having a theoretical discussion about what could be. They were looking at what is and understanding how they need to mold around it or where they had issues with how it was functioning. You're focusing on what's important, not what's commoditized and, and not relevant to the differentiating qualities of the application. Right. So um, uh, this organization, uh, as I as I said, is a wall to wall um, SAP shop, and uh, they decided to do their finance transformation with the RP Cloud. And one of the things that they understood is with the RP Cloud, there's already best practices built in. So there's no need to do uh, three to six months of requirement gathering and then go and configure the system. You can already see what is there. Um, uh, and then decide if uh, if that works for you or not. Right. So that's one of the shifts. Uh, in the way uh, projects are being handled uh, right now in, in cloud. So how do you define your future with a next generation ERP? Let me first explain what is a next generation ERP. Next generation ERP is built on and built um, to basically have um, incremental change by adding new capabilities in the core 
business operation. Um, and it helps you to build an agile organization. The second point is uh, it helps you to take advantage from the latest innovations that will help you transform your business. So very, very important to understand that it gives you continuous innovation. And, and the third thing is it helps you to maintain the level of security, reliability, and performance that you need. So you're running on a next generation technology platform. Okay, uh, so what is the next generation ERP and why, why now, right? So there, there are a couple of reasons. There is obviously the external market pressure where you want to be competitive against your competition. You want to make sure that you have innovation as your business advantage. You're able to give innovation to your employees, to your customers, to your suppliers, to your stakeholders. Um, and internally, um, uh, current systems aren't future, future ready yet. And I'll explain in a minute what that means. Also, the maturity of the ERP market has changed. It has shifted. So let's talk about what is a next generation ERP. A next generation ERP is um, is one that provides these five pointers, right? So the first one is simplification and agility. It gives you a, a TCO that is beneficial. Um, it gives you uh, the ability to leverage best practices. Uh, it gives you embedded innovation. You don't have to go outside of the ERP to look for innovation and bring other technologies and do other projects to build innovation within the ERP. And finally, it is secure. OK, so let's talk about why uh, why we believe Oracle is in the right place. So the first thing is we've always um, we, we've taken a very different strategy from from SAP in the cloud. Our strategy is to give our customers end to end business operation on one single unified data model. So finance, operations, supply chain, customer experience, human resources, FP&A, all are on one common data model. You may not realize, but just between finance and human resources, there are 43 connected uh, processes. So from a time a new, a new hire joins, he probably goes in, uh, takes, some, uh, takes some training, you create an employee record, and then uh, he basically goes in and let's say orders a laptop. When he orders a laptop, he touches procurement, he touches assets because that uh, that is an asset that the company owns. Uh, there's a PO, there is an invoice, that is a process of uh, payables. So there is a lot of touch points we may not realize, um, uh, but are happening in the background. So we always wanted to give our customers a connected end-to-end uh, -end business operation. So we have made sure that all our, our data model is connected. Also, I want to give you another uh, another example. All the customers that are running on an ERP are running on news of yesterday, right? This is a local newspaper in the region, um, and this is yesterday's news, right? So, for instance, we vaccinated more than 50,000 people in one day. This is yesterday's news. The reality is most of the ERPs that customers are running are also running on yesterday's news, what has already happened. What we want to give with the next generation ERP is to be able to embed innovation within the ERP so that we can learn the patterns and help you with technologies such as AI, machine learning, digital assistant, and blockchain and IoT with specific use cases that are already predefined for you. So you don't have to do a separate project outside of the ERP to bring these technologies in. But for instance, AI helps you to predict what the future forecast could be like based on past. So as an example, this is a headline that I created. I'm hoping to see this headline in the future. And the ERP cloud basically allows you to do that with the help of the embedded innovation that is included within the software. OK, we also invested in a very modern UI. So as you can see, the Oracle look and feel, even the Oracle.com look and feel has changed. And um, it is uh, called the Redwood UI. Uh, the modern UI gives the ability to basically use the same UI on a, on a laptop or on a mobile device uh, and uh, is something that is very intuitive where you don't need a lot of training to, to, um, to understand how to use it. I also want to mention that we started this journey of giving one connected data model in the cloud with Fusion uh, close to 13, 14 years ago. 
um, and uh, by now uh, we can we can safely say that no other public cloud provider can go as deep and as far as Oracle can. So whether it's financials, procurements, projects, enterprise performance management, risk, supply chain, where we've done a lot of investment, talent and workforce management, all of that um, uh, is now available on public cloud and is complete. And we constantly innovate by adding new capabilities. Okay, what is our strength is also from a finance standpoint, it's not just the ERP that we provide in the cloud. We also provide EPM, uh, which is our, uh, which is the tool set that um, that we acquired as part of Hyperion. So we're able to provide planning, budgeting, narrative reporting, financial consolidation, uh, external reporting, scenario modeling, combined with the ERP capability, so that our customers can have a complete solution for uh, the finance organization, whether it's the controllers organization or the FPNA organization. And from a supply chain standpoint, again, it's a connected model, right? So um, uh, connected uh, lead to cash. So not just order to cash, but lead to cash in the digital age, a digital supply chain, smart manufacturing, digital logistics with our transportation management and warehouse management tools, and digital service. All of that linked with the um, uh, with the emerging technologies such as uh, digital assistant, AI, IoT, depending on the use cases, right? And not just that, it is all linked with the finance uh, procurement and uh, planning applications so that you're not doing anything in silos. Okay, so uh, to summarize, next generation ERP, the architecture is the key. Um, so simplified best practice is very, very important. And uh, as I mentioned, the solution does come with best practices built in. Embedded in innovation is very, very important. A unified data model really gives you uh, a full view of the data uh, and a single version of the truth. Uh, it is secure and compliant and always up to date with the quarterly updates that we provide. Okay, um, so it's not just uh, me saying that we are the next generation ERP, but actually Oracle is recognized as a leader year after year in the Gartner quadrant uh, in many, many areas. Um, I wanted to just put one slide. Uh, so I, I summarized everything in one slide where you can see that financials, enterprise performance management, FPNA, HCM, manufacturing, transportation management, most of the solutions we are able to um, give our customers uh, the best service, and we are recognized as leader by uh, by the analyst firms. And I also want to assure you that if you do choose to go with Oracle Cloud, you will not be the first one. Uh, there are 7,300 plus SaaS customers that have already taken this journey, a lot of them globally, a lot of them locally. Uh, these are some of the local customers. And again, I've done it by industry. So you can see it's not that it fits only small size customers. It's not for all industries. No, in fact, um, we created a fusion to ensure that it, uh, it matches requirements for all industries and for all size of customers. Right, so the business benefits are big. Uh, I took a few of these examples in the beginning. Now I'll tell you what exactly they, they achieved. So uh, Fairfield, 33% uh, uh, of the accounting team was redeployed to impact processes rather than doing data collection. Hilton Worldwide, 40% worldwide, uh, improvement in forecast accuracy of their operations globally. Carbon is a 3D, um, uh, 3D printing company that also has retail. Um, they reduced their close cycle by 75%. Okay, so what are the costs that disappear forever in a public cloud? So traditionally on-premise -prem environments would have a IT infrastructure, licenses, staff and support and upgrades, and that would make up the TCO. In cloud, uh, there is only a subscription and uh, a small um, uh, a small uh, resource pool that supports um, the new updates and the capabilities within the cloud, right? So that's that's what a a um, cloud application would cost would look like, and we can help you calculate the benefits of moving from a traditional environment to a SaaS environment 
typically our customers see a TCO benefit of anywhere between 20 to 30% in, in the first three to five years, which is big. Okay, but the biggest benefit is not even that. The biggest benefit is you're always up to date. That means you will never have to worry about your customizations again. 81% um, uh, uh, of, um, of our customers said that staying current on the technology was the biggest benefit they saw with the RP Cloud. Because we provide quarterly updates to our customers um, um, within the subscription, they are always on the current technology and it comes in a opt-in mode. That means it comes in a switch off mode and you can choose to switch it on and deploy it or not at your own pace. Right, the last thing, partner with Oracle. Uh, the reasons why you should consider partnering with Oracle is because we believe that we've transformed from a product organization to a service organization. Um, and we have our customer first uh, in front of us. So we have a customer first mindset. We provide the most complete cloud. We provide the best technology platform stack that it runs on. Fastest innovation and a modern UI to give, our, give to our customers. So how do you assess your options? Well, you may say that, oh, I've, I've done a lot of big investment in my current platform and I'm not ready yet. So there are really three options for you. You can postpone and keep uh, current ERP and, and just observe. I want to mention that cost of waiting is 3.2 times of a current TCO that you will, uh, you will have. And there are studies that have been done that, that support that. Second is go all in, uh, migrate to a next generation ERP. Um, or the third one is learn and grow, have a successive adoption phase by phase that complements your existing ERP, but gives you the next gen capabilities as well. So I would like to mention that option A is not really an option. Postponing is not really an option because the TCO doesn't make sense there. So between the, the, the next two options, if you had to understand where to start, these are some of the areas where our where our customers start if they are using SAP as their backbone. Uh, so the first one that I want to mention is Product Data Hub, where you can centralize all product information from heterogeneous systems and create one repository, one version of the truth of your product master. Second is a uh, two-tier ERP model, where you can have possibly a, a specific subsidiary to pilot on a on a next-gen ERP, which is um, not disrupting the, the whole deployment, but to test it and pilot it. Um, the third one is a order management control tower. So order to cash solution that provides capabilities for customers, partners, and employees to select the right products, negotiate the best prices, and ensure timely fulfillment, including configure price and quote process. Enterprise performance management, which is basically our FP&A and financial consolidation tools. And finally, logistics excellence. Um, we are very well known for our solution on transportation ma management and warehouse management. And a lot of SAP customers and are talking to us and have deployed our logistics solution as well. So you can start small and see the difference for yourself. And finally, I want to give you some customer examples who've done it that way. So Lloyd's, as I mentioned um, uh, in the video, they started with financials, master data management, and reporting. That was a two-tier ERP um, uh, strategy that they took. Unilever, for instance, started with EPM. Uh, Nokia, for instance, uh, transportation management. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of our a lot of customers are uh, of SAP work with us on logistics and enterprise performance management. All right, so with that, I will uh, hand over to Martin, and Martin will actually take you through some of the local examples where we've done it, and uh, we've done it with EvoSys, and he will take you through all the details of how uh, how they, they were able to uh, help some of the SAP customers to move to a next generation ERP cloud. Martin, over to you. But before I do that, I will ask uh, Anurit to run one poll question, please. Can we have the first poll question, Anuri? Thank you for that, Artie. Um, if we may, we'll just give you a, a minute or so just to uh, uh, to help us with the poll, if you could. It just helps us to give us an idea of the audience. Uh, we've got a couple of polls that we'll run through here, if that's okay. 
Um, shouldn't take more than a, a minute or two just to respond. So just a couple of uh, just a couple of more seconds, if we may. That's great. Thank you. So hello again. Uh, my name is Martin Hope. As I said um, uh, said earlier in the introduction, what I wanted to do was give you a little bit of my background because um, I think it's important on presentations like this that you know whether that or person who's giving you the thoughts, knowledge, and ideas has got some background in the uh, uh, in the subject. Um, I've been a 25-year veteran of SAP. Uh, I don't like the word veteran, but um, that's what we're often called. And it gives you some idea of the things that I've done. Um, so I've been uh, with Evosys for the last six months. Um, before that, everything SAP. So I ran a cloud partner for just under 10 years um, out of the UK, but um, did an awful lot of business and a lot of business in the Middle East. Um, before that, I was a non-exec director of a 600-person partner, so um, got a lot of the consulting side from there. Prior to that, I ran a division for SAP, um, and before that, I started out life as a global account manager, running some of SAP's largest accounts globally. And so, lots and lots of SAP experience, and uh, um, I I'm going to try and relate all of that, if I may, um, uh, to the agenda. So, as I said, we're going to go through the what, why, how, who, uh, and then how again. And then we'll close and start answering some of the questions that you've started to send to us. So, thank you for that. So, what is happening in, uh, in the SAP ECC market globally? And the, personally, where I'd like to start is just a reference back to the, to the market that we see ourselves in, the pandemic at the present. And I thought this was a really helpful study from McKinsey. You see on the left, they talk about the five R's that help recovery. Um, and what they've been looking at has been different organizations and how they've coped with the pandemic. Some of their results in here have been really interesting. So the first one that they said was, organizations have been doing things much, much quicker um, uh, since the pandemic started and hit us all globally. I think use an example of a bank that typically would take four, four and a half years on a project, but it's been able to define and execute and deliver in less than four and a half weeks. Now, I, I don't know about you, but I, I wouldn't consider banks to be sort of that, that um, uh, uh, groundbreaking, but they're seeing examples of this from the upper quartile businesses right across the piece. The other things that they came up with were a realization that organizations have said that they're looking for much quicker implementations, especially technology. Um, typically, McKinsey have said that organizations are looking at, at, at projects which last no more than three to 12 months. Um, and we're certainly seeing that in our market and our client set. So organizations are looking to move very quickly, have a very, very strong, defendable return on investment in that time to actually move across um, from one project or product to another. If we look at the global market itself, then we are seeing organizations moving platform. And I think you can see that from a number of different perspectives. Uh, the first one is, uh, SAP's quarterly announcements. So they do announce how many organizations have moved to S4 HANA. Um, so in the first quarter, three quarters last year, so that's up until uh, the end of September, organizations were moving at about, um, S4 HANA's signups were about 500 per quarter. Um, and about less than half of that, about 45% of that was from the ECC customer base. So you are part of customer base globally of about 44,000 companies. So that's not really a very quick run rate. In Q4, that increased to about just over 400, but that's still less than about 120, 130 per, per month. What we are seeing though, um, as we saw in Oracle's quarterly three, uh, Q3 announcement about a week and a half ago, is that um, organizations are still moving quite quickly from ECC now. Um, being mindful of the 2025, 2027 dates um, of, uh, of sunsetting the product. And I think Oracle announced just over 100 um, SAP customers 
that are now using Oracle in earnest. That is organizations that have moved to replace, as I'm saying here, so a platform replacement, but also a surround. So we are seeing a, a significant demand for organizations that run SAP ECC and HCM and success factors looking for best of breed, as Artie said. So they look at what, what are Gartner saying? What are the industry analysts, uh, analysts saying? And they're working with those. So they're looking at FP&A solutions. They're looking at supply chain solutions, transport management solutions, procurement solutions as well. Um, and they're moving across. And then what are the drivers that we see? Well, we've seen organizations determined to change because they found that uh, their ECC implementations have been very challenging to change. And I, I'm sure you'll all um, recognize that purely and simply because of the amount of development and bespoke work that's been put into that ECC, into those Z programs and Z data. You know, that builds an enormous pile of technical debt that you've got. And it, it, it often has been done by multiple partners over the last 10 to 15 years. And doing it that way means that some of it's incredibly well documented, but others, other parts of it aren't. And you've got that challenge of when something like a pandemic occurs and you don't move your business, you know, three to 10 percent, but suddenly a 45 percent change that has to be done very, very quickly. That, those are the things that probably hold you back. The second thing is that, and I'll show a, an SAP user group study in a minute, that organizations crying out for what I describe as disruptive technologies, what Artie described as, you know, the next generation ERP, things like RPA to make, make processes more efficient, like um, AI, like ML, like chatbots, you know. Um, and then the last thing is that, Organizations are looking to reduce that uh, that cost of that underlying cost, that baked in cost, that center of excellence that I'm sure you've all got that are basically, you know, people in the center that are keeping the lights on for you. They're trying to defray that cost. They're looking to defray that cost because times have been tough over the last 12 months and they are likely to continue yet. And I wanted to show this, this is just an example of some of our customers that have made the move. So those at the top um, uh, with the replace banner, um, uh, a number of those are, are in the Middle Eastern region. So uh, Vodafone Qatar, uh, Batelco, which is in Bahrain, and uh, Saudi Airlines Catering, which is in KSA. And then we've also got organizations that have moved to a best of breed. Um, and I show the Gartner quadrants on the bottom right, but you already saw that from Artie. So why are they moving from SAP? Well, these are the reasons I think most clients bought SAP in the first place. So these are some fundamentals that I, I think are um, true for every organization. So the ability to do global business, to run your organization globally rather than run it on regional stovepipes, to have a fully integrated core, that is, um, you know, hire to retire, um, order to cash, those processes are all standard, all work off the same database, the same data structure, so things are easy to do, you input once and you use many. And then the last one are the 25 industry solutions that are available on ECC, but have not yet been uh, replicated on S4HANA. Now, the interesting thing is that I think if you were looking for that now, this is probably what you would be looking for. Now, I've, I'm intrigued because I've been, as I said, I've been around the SAP market for 25 years. SAP was the king of integration. Um, but with the strategy that they had when they started to buy alternative products, they bought success factors, Concur, Qualtrics, um, Ariba. They, they have moved to attempt to do a more of a best of breed solution and have tried to defray that data harmonization by putting in a data semantic level. But as you know, that's all great when things work really well. Um, but when challenges occur, the, the problem that you've got is actually rebuilding that and keeping it working properly. So I would say currently, if you were looking at all of those fundamentals that most organizations look for 10, 15 years ago when they implemented SAP. This is definitely a solution that would 
would be on my list and i would say that's one of the things that i think we should be considering um if if you're looking at the move the second thing is that there's a skill shortage um this is a uh, a quote from Paul Cooper, who's the chairman of the UK SAP user group. And it's not actually about Esfahana, it's about ECC. It's about your center of excellence. And what he's basically saying is that um, people in that center of excellence are growing old, they're retiring, and that um, replacing those ABAP skills and those basis skills is the real challenge because uh, now that the solution has been sunset. You know, the the new uh, the next generation coming out of university have got lots of choices. And are they going to choose um, uh, going into something like Basis to try and support an organisation that's got a product which has got you know a lifespan of 2027 or 2030, rather than going to a Google or an Apple? I I think Paul has made a very salient point here. You know that that you can still get those skills, but they're costly. So how, how do you regain your competitive advantage? Well, one of those is from a cost perspective. And what I've got here for you is, um, is a rep from a report, a 27 rep page report from the Birmingham City Council. Now, most of you, I'm sure, don't know who the Birmingham City Council are, but they turn over about a billion pounds in the UK. And they are the largest council right across Europe. Um, and what they've had to do, because they're a public body, is they have to publish their business justification of change. So the first line you can see is estimated running a support cost of the current SAP ERP system. Now, you'll all be familiar with that, so that's your maintenance. Uh, and if you've got a center of excellence, then SAP reduced your maintenance by a couple of percentage points. But they, in doing that, you had to put in a center of excellence, which is basically people. Uh, people supporting and keeping the lights on within ECC. Um, th those costs never reduce because it's people. I I've never heard anybody accept, uh, except for temporary measures, accept a reduction in their salaries. So that is, um, they are in millions of pounds. So you can see per annum, it's about 7.53 million pounds. So that's about $11 million, give or take. And then you can see the third line, uh, sorry, the second line, which is the estimated running a support cost of a cloud-based ERP. That is Oracle Fusion covering ERP, covering uh, FP&A, covering uh, uh, HCM as well. And if you look at those numbers, I think they're very pertinent to the conversation today because their running costs are 46 percent lower in effect what they're doing is defraying a significant amount of that center of excellence overhead to the vendor to oracle so our oracle runs and manages it in their data center the other thing it does is it releases your people in your center of excellence to become those arbiters of change those people know your business probably as well if not better than anyone in your organization and if you provide them with those tools, the RPA tools, the AI tools, the ML tools, they will give you that capability and drive your business forward because they know how you work. And then and PCC have also added that once they go live, they expect to have further savings of just under two million pounds. So just under two and a half million dollars. And that is by the redeployment of those staff that they um, want to put into more client-facing um, environments rather than doing uh, repetitive work that the likes of uh, robotic process automation will do for them. This is a study from uh, the, um, the largest SAP user group globally. It was done in November. It was about 600 of the largest clients in America, um, and it was what what do you want for Christmas? What what would you like for 2021? And these are the key elements that they've got. And as we showed before, um, that you know uh, it's simple to get that when it comes out of the box. It's more challenging to build when you're trying to do an add-on um, and you're trying to get something to do what it wasn't actually originally intended for. Here, what I've done is I've um, I've taken an old SAP ECC slide. Um, 
And what I've done is I've aligned it with all of those elements that you can see from Oracle Fusion. So interestingly, Oracle Fusion has a, has a larger footprint covering ECC than SAP S4 HANA does, purely and simply because all of these are function blocks that fit together rather than different products. And I thought this would be helpful for you. I know it's a very old SAP slide, but you know, the, the, you know, the, this is how we all thought of ECC um, before it was uh, before it was slightly redefined from a marketing point of view. And the interesting thing is here that you get all of this um, as a single product, but you also get elements of the industry solution from Fusion that you can't currently get from S4HANA because they're not built. Um, and therefore, those vertical elements that are key to you moving forward we believe we can also provide. If I look again at that slide from Oracle that I used earlier, if you look at the center, these are the things that come out of the box. So digital assistant, blockchain where it's needed, so you've got that immutable record, machine learning, AI, RPA, and those are all those disruptive technologies that I said that we are seeing customers have got a demand for. It's not just a demand to take their market by storm, it is often now a demand to, um, to be able to compete from a cost and a profitability perspective. Because as you all know, the market has changed dramatically over the last months. If we look at some success stories. Um, I picked the two, particularly two out of the region. So Patelco, um, interestingly that Patelco started um, their journey with Oracle and ourselves by implementing a surround solution, a best of breed solution for their FP&A solution. So doing budgeting, forecasting and analysis. And, and that moved to um, a requirement from them to do uh, a quick implementation. Uh, and they decided to, uh, once they'd done that surround, to start a wholesale replacement. Um, and they did that because they, they were challenged by in their market, in the telco market, um, uh, fast, uh, agile competitors coming in and really challenging them in their market. And it, it was really so that they could continue to compete. You can see in yellow down on the left-hand side all the elements that they, they thought were important. We also did this um, on what we call a KPI-driven or a value-based delivery basis, which I'll come on to in a little while to help you understand how we can help defray any risk um, of, of movement. The second client is Vodafone Qatar. Uh, they were on SAP ECC and success factors, <coughs> excuse me, and they needed to move quickly. Their KPI was for us to move just under a thousand users, two and a half million customers covering and their functional area covering finance, ERP, HCM, and some very specific uh, PaaS solutions um, to a new system and get up and running in less than five months. Uh, we achieved that, um, and you know, it's great testament to some of the uh, programs and processes that we have around this capability that I'll talk about in a minute. But I thought it would be nice just to hear from Keith, who is their transformation program lead. Keith Rounds, uh, I'm a transformation program manager uh, working for Vodafone Qatar. Very clear in, in Vodafone Qatar that we were approaching this as a business transformation, not a technology transformation. And I think that was absolutely critical to the success that we've had because it creates a certain mindset and approach and um, that technology is an enabler to the change rather than technology is the driver to change and um, thinking about and considering the user adoption user acceptance but also improving the day-to-day -day experience for our employees uh, which is absolutely critical 
the other key factor for us um, was our ability to deliver this in a very, very quick time frame. Uh, so with the support of uh, Oracle and Evosis, uh, who were our systems integration partner, um, we were able to deliver the complete migration from a SAP on-premise environment to an Oracle Cloud SaaS solution in five months. So as you can see, um, very aggressive timescales. And we wouldn't really be able to do that without the capability that we've built over the last two or three years. Uh, we call it SAP Glide. And it's all about a program and process of moving clients across or integrating into S, uh, clients' SAP systems. It's the first time I've ever seen uh, an Oracle, pure Oracle uh, consulting house step across the line um, into the SAP environment. So we've built um, processes that enable us to analyze your system, analyze what you're doing, to a large extent, analyze the processes that you're using, um, and then to map those uh, across to, uh, to Oracle Fusion to show you what can be used and how it can be done. So here you can see, um, uh, they, they never look quite that exciting, uh, the ECC reports, but these ABAP scripts that we've built will analyze your implementation. Now, they do that for a reason, because what we're doing is we're trying to work out um, what standard processes you use, what Z programs you have, what Z data you have, and what is actually being used. And we found in a number of clients that in doing this, um, we not only can help them in that transition, but we can also identify a lot of that technical debt that is no longer used. So that immediately reduces um, your reliance on that and the support of that, which obviously has a cost. So we do that, we can produce reports, we can analyze it, we often produce information that clients find um, intriguing and they're surprised at. Now, I'm sure your COE people have got great skills to do this, but if you're thinking of moving um, or if you're thinking of using a surround solution which will require both um, inbound data and outbound data from ECC, then this is really a, a product that uh, that can help. Um, and we do this both uh, for our clients, we are also doing it for, for other clients as well because it's been seen now as a de facto standard. The other side of the coin from a de-risking point of view is that we, we do a thing called value-based delivery on a number of our projects. We've done about 40 now globally. Um, what that means is that you and we agree what your key performance indicators are coming out of the success of your project. And we will then put together uh, the delivery of our project and we'll put some of that project cost against the delivery of your KPIs. I think that's really unusual. I know a lot of organizations talk about that, but we're executing that now. That means for you that we're totally aligned. And you know, in my old fashioned head, the way to align two organizations is to make it financial so that we're both driving for exactly the same goal. And once you set your goals, we'll, we'll look to achieve them so that we, we achieve that, um, that percentage. Now, the other side of that coin is that that continues with our customers. They like that. They want that to continue beyond the end of project one. They see this as a, an ongoing journey to actually get and achieve all those disruptive technologies in their business and, and to get those financial gains that they see their competitors doing. So I haven't, I've only put one slide up here, but I think it's really important. Um, and they're not preset KPIs, although we do, have, uh, we do have 150 of those, but we often find customers decide that they want to merge a couple of KPIs because that's the driver for them. Um, so what I, what I could do is if, if you wish, we can go through that in a little bit more detail. So I hope that's helped you today, um, understanding that what we've been doing here and how we can help both, if you wish to, use a surround solution um, to 
uh, extend the life of your SAP ECC implementation, or indeed do a replace, which we do. Now, the last slide I've got up here is basically saying, you know, that's all great, it's all well and good, but you need to be supported by a partner that's got experience of the region globally and got capability. Um, so we we are we are in we're present in 30 countries. We've got now just under 2,000 experts. Uh, we grew that uh, by about 250 heads last year, um, which is manageable. We also have a, a number of vertical solutions you can see in the bottom left corner. Um, consider those to be sort of the IS solutions, the industry solutions that you've seen from SAP. So I hope that's been helpful for you. Uh, as I say, my name is Martin Hope. Um, I'm a global VP for EvoSys for their SAP Convert program. So if you've got any questions, please feel free um, to ask. Um, and if I could, uh, Anurit, could you run the second poll, please? So I can also see a, a number of questions coming through, which is great. Um, both Artie and myself, happy to answer any questions that you've got. Um, if you give us a really hard one, we might have to come back to you. Uh, but uh, hopefully we can answer those questions for you on this call. Just give it another couple of seconds. If you could uh, just answer the poll, that'd be great. Um, and if you, Anurit, if you could close it now for me, um, and we'll just go into closing remarks if we may. So there is a, um, a call to action. There is a, an offer that both ourselves and Oracle be more than happy to provide um, to actually provide you a, a, a three-hour tour of what we could do specifically for your organization uh, for next generation ERP. Um, Artie, would you like to walk um, the attendees through? Sure. Thanks, Martin. So this is a um, three-hour remote uh, workshop that we do for SAP ECC uh, 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 deployment uh, customers where you could uh, experience um, the reasons for your organizations to look at ERP Cloud. We will give you a quick tour of what it looks like. Why is it unique? Uh, we will also tell you the difference of how life in the cloud changes for your resources internally, as well as for your users. Uh, how do you get there? So how do you get there with EvoSys? Um, uh, with Glide, uh, for instance, and uh, then conclude whether there is there is an opportunity to work together and in what capacity, whether it means that we take one step or a full replace or we take steps uh, through a journey which could be three to five years long, right? So that leads us to then uh, go into a feasibility study. So this is a workshop available to all um, uh, SAP ECC uh, ERP uh, customers to, to experience a next generation ERP. Uh, it is tailored uh, for SAP uh, ECC uh, customers so that we understand you and there are SAP, there are, well, ex SAP uh, people such as Martin that are part of these workshops that support conversations um, uh, with customers uh, like yourselves. I also see a question. Um, uh, on the chat, what about the resource challenges while making move to Oracle? Companies only have SAP trained resources and replacing them with Oracle trained resources, will that be a pain point? Well, that's an excellent question. Um, and I, I understand uh, that, you know, there is um, uh, there is skill set uh, within the organization that is on a certain platform. I also want to mention that as part of um, the project, we we do um, include a, a full training and handover uh, to the to the resources so that you can learn on the project and see how to deploy it and maintain it further. Not just that, if you go to the Oracle University uh, website, you can find all the trainings uh, listed there. Uh, and a lot of them were actually uh, available for, for free uh, last year. So you can still go and avail them. Uh, they may be at a, at a small cost, but we're happy to train um, and shift those skill sets as part of the project to Oracle skill set. Right. Arti, could, uh, could I, just, I just chip in? Now, what we awesome. what we found in our clients, we've got a we've got a significant number of replacement clients around the world, 
and we've been um, uh, very, very pleasantly surprised with the SAP community within the Center of Excellence. They, they, they are often analysts, and analysts can turn their hand to many different solutions, as they've shown, because you, it's rare just to run ECC. You normally run ECC and a basket of other um, enterprise solutions. So these, these um, architects, these uh, business people and technology people have already done that transformation. What you've got um, is if you take a step back from that uh, center of excellence, you, you realize that you've got a suite of people that know your business better than anybody else. And, and they are raring to go on new technologies. Now, we may need to infill around some of the Oracle Cloud uh, elements, but actually a lot of that is defrayed now to the vendor, it's defrayed to Oracle. So you don't have that, that technology challenge of, of really keeping the lights on. You suddenly can turn your center of excellence into something that can generate new revenues, new profitability. Um, it can be a profit center rather than a cost center. And, and we've seen each time we've done it, We've had that expectation that, you know, you've got SAP people in your COE, they're not interested in Oracle, but that's not the case. They, they're normally very interested in the business. They are normally company people. They've normally been around an awful long time and they've been desperate to get their hands on these technologies. We can redeploy them and utilize their skills and knowledge. It's, it's, we found very little resistance which I, for one, was surprised at. So if I just leave you with this, this is uh, all that, that Artie and I presented, but you also have here uh, both uh, Ala and Yasser Khalil, um, who are the respective people who are managing the region. Um, you've got contact details on there for everybody. Uh, and now perhaps we can go to the question. Artie, can you see another question on there? I can see them. I'm just looking if there are any more. Um, how do we influence our customer for opting Oracle instead of SAP? All right, I think that's an interesting question. I think um, there, there are a couple of ways to, to have this conversation, right? Um, and obviously it is all about uh, uh, doing it at the right time. Um, so how, how do we influence our customer for opting Oracle instead of SAP? I think it's important that that they uh, first get the awareness. So the, the three hour remote workshop could be a start so that just they can get some awareness of what the solutions are. Uh, TCO, um, uh, I think TCO is a big conversation. I, I've seen uh, SAP projects um, uh, run into a multi-year and um, uh, long uh, multi-million dollar projects versus giving them faster time to value. Uh, whether it's phased or a, a full transformation. So um, I, I would say there are a couple of ways to do it. And also we can uh, we can put you in touch with other SAP customers who've done that switch, um, if that helps. So there are a couple of ways to, to, to lead this discussion. Um, it could be an awareness workshop, the, the one that we shared in the, in the previous slide, which is a three hour remote workshop or it could be a TCO discussion that we could have if it's a finance uh, a team, or uh, it could be um, talking to another uh, customer who's been through this journey so that they can tell you why they did it and what was uh, the difference uh, for them would be my, my answer. Martin, any, any inputs from your side? No, I, I, I agree with you, Artie. I agree with you. Which which question was that? Sorry, I was just going through the questions now, so I'm just ready for the next one. Uh, it is, how do we influence our customer for uh, opting Oracle instead of yeah. SAP? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that's awareness, Artie. I mean, that, what we find is that, you know, users, once they start to see the, the ease of use and things, they, they move across so they don't have to remember things like uh, the four the four character screen number and things that they've got on ECC. So that, you know, uh, be, things being a lot more intuitive and I agree with you, you know, getting people involved in the solution and having getting their hands on it is really important. Yeah, so um, there is another question. Um, 
interesting one actually. Moving from SAP to Oracle could be cumbersome, especially for big size companies. Do you have any such success stories of such migration? Well, I touched on one um, with BCC. Um, as I said, they are a billion pound turnover, $1.3 billion turnover business. I think Artie talked about uh, Lloyd's Banking Group, talked about a couple of others. Um, I, I think you'd be very surprised. Um, I, I was, um, uh, my eyes were opened when I joined Evosys to realize the capability of Oracle Fusion to actually run major organizations around the globe. Um, we are certainly talking to um, uh, more than two dozen of those organizations that are looking at replacement. Um, they don't see it as cumbersome, they see it as the opposite, a streamline. So they're looking at it from uh, process efficiency, they're looking at it from data efficiency, and they're looking at it from a redeployment of their people to make them more um, customer centric or profit centric, rather than doing those repetitive uh, roles that um, you know we're all aware of within ECC that you are actually you know you'll have roles where you've got manual workarounds or you'll have roles where they're taking taking data out of one system and inputting it into something else because the integration pieces are not quite in place yet. So I don't think it's cumbersome. I think it's the opposite, um, and certainly that's what I've experienced having talked to a lot of our uh, replacements around clients around the world. Marty, would you like to add anything? Uh, no, I agree with you. Yeah. So um, it, it is an opportunity more more than uh, more than anything else. And and I also want to mention that organizations want to be current and relevant. People want to be current and relevant. So it's an opportunity for both uh, uh, the people uh, that are part of the organization and the organization themselves. So yes, I see it more as an opportunity. There's another question come in as well. Um, can you give the main core reason for shifting SAP to Oracle? So um, I, I'm happy to start that one off. Um, SAP ECC and S4HANA are very different solutions. Uh, they, they have a different footprint, fundamental footprint. Um, and you know, if you go to S4 HANA, then uh, it's supported by the HANA database, which is not relational, it's columnar. Um, and then you've got things like you've gone from FICO to going to Universal Ledger. You know, these force you down a transformation route. Um, that means that, you know, you, you have to think about, well, how do we redefine our business to fit this? Um, Fusion is much more about giving you that capability of doing sort of um, an MVP uh, ERP solution, if you wish, to move very quickly. Or the, the other drivers might be efficiency, or they might be, let's start off in a particular area. You know, I see all these as key elements for the reasons that SAP ECC users would be interested and want to move to Oracle. Um, and I, I, you know, I understand the gains that you would get through transformation, but also in talking to a lot of execs, I appreciate that you know they've lost a whole year out of their business. Um, there are, you know, for every Amazon, there are tens of thousands of businesses that are really hurting through the pandemic. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to get their efficiencies at lowest cost, both lowest cost up front, but also lowest on cost, because your CFO doesn't want all that cost of your COE, your center of excellence, baked into his numbers forever, which is what he's got now. And he would have with s because it's now called Business Technology Platform and significantly extended. So your center of excellence costs are likely to increase rather than decrease if you go that route. Um, if you go the Oracle route, then you are defraying the majority of that technical, technology, functional support back to Oracle. And I, for one, think that's a good thing because, you know, the times of needing something in, you know, on your own tin or in your private cloud, I, I think are passing this by. I mean, there are still reasons for doing it. And, you know, Oracle Fusion could do the same thing, but it's 
it, it is where the extra financial gains can be had. Marty? Yeah. Yeah, and just to add, Martin, I think the biggest reason is as a SAP ECC customer, I think you you do have a deadline. At some point, you have to make that shift, whether it is to to SAP new um, a new platform with uh, with Hana or with with another vendor. The thing is, um, the um, the S4 Hana public cloud platform. Uh, a lot has been talked about it, and I think uh, Martin also mentioned in the user groups there is a lot of uh, discussions around it. So if you look at it, we believe that it is still a long way to go to to be a fully public cloud, broad and deep solution compared to compared to what we can offer. So um, at some point you'll have to make that decision. And if you are going to make that decision, why not look at another option as well? Absolutely. I, I think we've got time for one more question, Artie. Would you would you care to choose it? Sure, uh, I'm struggling to read it through, but uh, let's see. <laughs> no, I'm not able to uh, to scroll through. Uh, Martin, can you uh, take one, okay. please? I, I, so, um, so the, the the question I've got is, how about migration on a global scale for global organizations? The migration should happen at the same time for synergies. How do you see this? Well. We, we, like any project-based organization, would plan this carefully. Um, and what we do is we set up Glide so that we are ready to do that first, second, third cut of processes and data. And we build the, uh, the solution around those, but we do that final cut just as we go live. So, um, and it doesn't mean that we can't retrofit as we go. So for global organizations, it is always more challenging, um, but then we have to think about what is their strategy? Is their strategy to do it per geo, per region, per vertical, uh, per division? You know, and we've, we've done all of those things um, in different projects. So we are highly skilled in bringing those projects to bear to make sure that organizations can move across. As you heard from Artie's presentation, a number of global businesses have already done it and are flourishing because of it. So um, I, I don't think that's a particular challenge. It comes down to the particular drivers of, a, of one organization versus another. Um, and it's their goals that they're key. Artie? Yeah, I agree with you, uh, Martin. Nothing more to add. Yes, uh, there's a lot of global organizations that have already uh, the, uh, made that shift across industries. Uh, I mentioned a few global logos. I mentioned a few local logos. Uh, and the, the question is the strategy that we adopt for migration would be uh, ensuring that there's minimal disruption to your business um, uh, globally. So um, we can take you through all the strategies that we, that we deploy, usually with our customers to ensure that there is no disruption to the business when the migration is happening. Absolutely. So that was the last question. Um, I wanted to uh, thank you on behalf of both my, <coughs> excuse me, myself and Artie for your time and attendance. Um, we had a number of questions. Are we going to send out the, uh, the webinar? Yes, we are to attendees um, and also the presentation, I think. So if you need anything more from us, you've got our contact details on the screen. Uh, feel free to call to call us if you don't want to avail yourself of the three hour next generation ERP, but you want to do something slightly different. That's not a problem. We can accommodate you. Um, and if you need anything further, please get in touch with us. And I thank you very much for your